Ending the War on Marijuana. A presentation by Paul Brackey. Author, publisher, American Leadership Books. Author of nine books on social, political, and criminal justice issues. Currently, more than 50% of the U.S. population supports legalizing pot. A growing number of states and cities have passed laws that make it legal to grow and distribute medical marijuana. Business investors have made the case that if marijuana in all forms was legalized, it could be taxed by federal and state governments. This federal and state taxation could provide significant revenue, particularly for cash-starved states. There is a trend to decriminalize marijuana in many states. There is growing support for legalizing marijuana, especially for medical uses. We should monitor what happens in the states that decriminalize or legalize medical or recreational marijuana before we consider any national legislation to decriminalize or legalize it. The money saved in states that decriminalize marijuana could be applied to the more serious crisis involving opioids and other addictive drugs that contribute to fatal overdoses. Such savings could be applied nationally if decriminalization should occur at the national level. Decriminalization would have a significant economic benefit. We spend many hundreds of millions of dollars on incarcerating many thousands of prisoners for cannabis possession. We spend much much more for processing the additional three quarters of a million people annually arrested for cannabis possession. Here are my suggestions for how we should handle the possibility of legalizing marijuana. Decriminalize the possession of small quantities of recreational marijuana. This way possessing a small quantity will be considered only an infraction, such as a citation or speeding ticket. We should try out considering possessing a small quantity as an infraction in certain test states and observe the results. If the negative consequences of decriminalization are small, more states will decriminalize it. We should observe closely what happens in those states that have legalized medical marijuana. If those efforts are successful, we should take steps to legalize medical marijuana elsewhere where prudent to do so. We should take into consideration the sentiments for and against legalization held by residents of those in the state. If residents are largely in favor, legalization should occur. If they are largely against it, legalization should not. We should assess the results obtained in states that have legalized and taxed all marijuana. If the results show minimal adverse consequences, we should allow more states to legalize recreational marijuana. We should invest the money that is now going toward interdiction and prison building back to government coffers, along with the income from state marijuana taxes. If marijuana is legalized, it should be done in a responsible manner. Washington state's policy seems a sound one to adopt, since it includes these provisions. 1. Provide accountable oversight by an agency of government. A state agency should write regulations regarding the growing, producing, and selling of marijuana. These regulations should include tight limitations on advertising and the prevention of access to pot by minors. The agency should have the authority to issue licenses to growers, producers, and sellers and to enforce adherence to the rules. These steps could have been followed in other states legalizing medical marijuana. 2. Include a well-funded marijuana education program based on science rather than ideology. 3. Have a well-funded prevention program to help young people use marijuana wisely and avoid abusing it. 4. Establish a treatment program for marijuana dependence. 5. Require an evaluation of the new model's impact. 6. Make state funds available for research on marijuana by the state's two major research universities. In considering decriminalizing or legalizing medical or recreational marijuana, it is important to consider the more conservative values of residents of many heartland states. They tend to hold these values, since they are often more religious and traditional than those living in more urban areas, especially on the coasts. They may hold these values because they are especially concerned with trying to bring up their children safely. They may be concerned about the dangers of pot products that could easily be ingested by children. Thus, they should be allowed to exercise their own rights in crafting any national policy. Increasingly, states are taking steps to legalize medical marijuana, and more and more states are decriminalizing recreational marijuana, too. 
Let's learn from the states that have decriminalized marijuana and see what works or doesn't. Let's use that knowledge to craft a national policy that recognizes states' rights. If effective strategies are pursued, there will be gains economically through taxation as well as lowered costs of law enforcement and incarceration of marijuana users. Previous books and chapters on the drug use crisis in the U.S. Dealing with Crime by Illegal Immigrants and the Opioid Crisis. Chapters in Crime in America. Uncertain Justice. For more information, American Leadership Books. Little Rock, Arkansas. www.americanleadershipbooks.com. Info at americanleadershipbooks.com.